There's only a handful of things that are truly guaranteed in life, and birth and death are two of them. Sooner or later, we're all forced to bite the cold shoulder of death. While some people drift away peacefully in their sleep, some inadvertently go out in the most spectacular and bizarre fashion that they end up going down in history. So in this week's video, we're celebrating 100,000 subscribers by returning to a viewer favorite. Without further ado, here are 10 more bizarre deaths. On the 1st of August, 2022, a man named Muthu Kumar, who we'll call Muthu, had reportedly been in charge in overseeing the preparation of porridge for an upcoming festival in India. The sticky, sweet concoction was being prepared in large metal containers in the middle of the street with no lids. Muthu can be seen swaying back and forth. He's clearly going through some sort of phase, so he holds onto the wall for support. And while he's in this haze, he looks desperately around for a seat. Captured on CCTV, in what looks like a moment of poor judgment, Muthu decides to perch on the side of a boiling porridge vat. Passerbys looked at him in confusion, knowing that he was so close to falling in, and one even reached out to ask if he was okay. But before anyone could assist, Muthu attempted to fully seat himself on the porridge. He overshot it and plunged straight into the sticky, boiling mess, submerging up to the neck in the stuff. Now submerged in boiling liquid, Muthu went into complete shock. He tried to pull himself out, but every surface that he touched was scalding. He just completely froze in panic. Many people rushed to his aid, pulling at his arms to help him, but he had fallen into such an awkward position. Muthu was conscious throughout, as five to six people worked to heave him out of the barrel. But they didn't want to get burnt themselves. They pulled and pulled, and eventually the entire porridge vat fell over into the street, ejecting Muthu to the ground. People watched as he tried to stand up, and it was clear to see that he couldn't believe what had just happened. While he was able to walk away from the scene, his burns were catastrophic. He had the worst degree of burns on 95% of his body. They rushed him to hospital, but sadly, he passed away that night. Police's initial investigations found that Muthu did suffer from epilepsy, but they couldn't be sure if he was experiencing an episode when he stumbled. In 2011, a 49-year-old woman named Fang Yu lived with her husband in Kazan, Russia. The pair were preparing for dinner when suddenly Fang Yu felt a sudden stabbing pain in her chest. It shot across all her body, causing immense pain. She screamed out for help and collapsed right there in the kitchen. She was rushed to hospital. After looking at her, the doctors found that she had suffered a massive heart attack. Sadly, nothing could be done and she was pronounced dead. The family just could not believe how sudden it was. One minute she was here, and the next she wasn't. They mourned her death and gathered for her funeral two days later. Relatives slowly passed and glanced into the open coffin when all of a sudden, Fagalyu's eyes began to flutter and open. She woke inside her coffin to complete confusion. She was at her own funeral. She had heard her relatives praying for her soul to go to heaven. She screamed at the top of her lungs and they rushed her back to the hospital. When they got back to the hospital, she was still in complete shock and they tried to calm her down. But because of the shock, she ended up suffering another heart attack. She then went into cardiac arrest. 12 minutes after arriving at the hospital, she died again. And this time for good. Can you imagine attending a funeral for this to happen to you? It's just unfathomable. Not everyone gets two funerals in the same week. The hospital went on to launch an investigation as to how the doctors made such a fatal mistake and they later found that she must have gone into a coma but multiple sources incorrectly labeled her as dead her husband said as quoted by the austrian times she wasn't dead when they said she was and they could have saved her after this whole ordeal many were surprised that the husband didn't die from shock himself In 2012, a 24-year-old man named Janaka lived with his family in Sri Lanka. 
Now, Janaka worked for the local police unit and fought in Sri Lanka's 25-year civil war. And in his childhood, he would watch loads of action films such as James Bond, Jackie Chan, and he soon developed a taste for unusual, dangerous acts. He was busy working when all of a sudden he got the idea to break a Guinness World Record. He thought about the plethora of records that he could break, but in the end, he settled on the most ridiculous idea. Janaka wanted to break the world record for the longest time being spent buried alive. He fixated on this record and soon got to work breaking it. He first planned a two hour long burial session in his back garden just to test the waters. So he, along with the help of his family, dug a 10 foot trench in his back garden. Here, Janaka laid down and requested to be buried. Two hours later, he was pulled out and here he felt ready to break the record. So a couple of days later, he waltzed back out to his garden and requested his family to bury him again. Now looking online, the record for a man being buried alive was over 100 hours. Janaka lasted a respectful six hours before he signaled for help and was pulled out. Now despite the failure, Janaka refused to give up. The next day, on Saturday, March the 3rd, 2012, bright and early, he returned to his garden, ready to try again. Around 9.30 a.m., just like they did before, his family sealed his tomb with soil and wood and set the timer going. Later in the day, around 4 p.m., Janaka signaled to leave, but this time it was a lot more aggressive than last. His family began excavating the wood and soil that buried him, and when they got to him, he was unconscious. They pulled him out and rushed him to hospital, but he was pronounced dead on arrival. His cause of death was lack of oxygen. The government urged the public to not attempt such high-risk events and Guinness officially went on to say that record attempts relating to being buried alive are not authorised as to avoid people putting themselves in danger. On Sunday, July the 23rd, 2006, the day started like any other for many residents of the county of Durham, England. In Durham is a park called the Riverside Park. This park is a large stretch of grass that has always been popular with visitors as it was often used to hold art exhibitions for touring art companies and bands. However, that weekend, something special had come to Riverside Park. It was an inflatable sculpture known as Dream Space. Dream Space was created in 1996 by British sculptor Maurice Aegis. Dream Space, along with his other pieces of art, toured across Europe and was seen by thousands. Maurice and his team arrived on Saturday the 22nd to set up the sculptures and open them to the public the next day. That Sunday morning, it was bright and sunny with a light breeze, eventually attracting around 500 people to see his art. Of course, Dream Space was the main attraction. The sculpture was indeed something that you don't see every day. It was a giant towering abstract maze that you could explore and walk around. It was made out of rubber and inflated similarly to a bouncy castle. It measured a massive 112 yards. It boggled the eye just looking at it. As the day went on, the wind slowly started to pick up, but they prepared for this. Maurice told his employees to secure it with more rope to the moorings. As Maurice made this commandment, he left the scene for a tea break. Within moments of him leaving, pure pandemonium broke out. While the inflatable structure was tied to the ground with ropes and moorings, it proved totally insufficient. Around 3.30 that afternoon, the structure rose and one by one, the pegs snapped and came out of the ground. Many people who were inside at the time were forced to leap out as it gained altitude. Staff fought to keep it on the ground and even Maurice came out to assist holding it down. But even with around 40 men still holding it, they stood no chance. A summer storm had built and huge gusts of wind began to carry the structure up to 30 feet in the air. This is footage from the incident. People watched as this gargantuan structure drifted through the air. It then hit the CCTV camera and began tumbling into a nearby car park. But what goes up must come down. After some solid air time, the structure plummeted to the ground, where staff rushed in to provide aid. It was total chaos. In total, 13 people were injured and multiple children suffered punctured lungs, broken ribs, not to mention internal bleeding. The most catastrophic of injuries was sustained by a 39-year-old woman named Claire 
and a 68-year-old woman named Elizabeth. They had been crushed in the fall while they were inside. They were rushed to the nearest hospital, but sadly, they both died that evening. When staff were questioned, they said that they'd witnessed the structure blowing at least two feet into the air the previous days, and even on that Sunday. They reported it to Maurice, and he was aware, but nothing was done. In 2009, Maurice, the creator, was charged with negligent manslaughter, and after a four-week trial, he was found not guilty. He was, however, charged £10,000 for breaching health and safety rules. Maurice said that this affected him greatly and said that he would never build anything like Dream Space again. But as fate had it, he would never get the chance, as he also died just two months later in 2009. This story begins in 2021 in a place called Cavite in the Philippines. It was the pandemic's peak, curfews were still in place, and everyone wore masks and sheltered from the virus. In the UK, it seemed to go on and on and on. Indonesia, however, made headlines last year for bizarre punishments for breaking curfew measures. Depending on how severely they felt you broke the rules, this included having to bury COVID victims, sleep overnight in haunted houses, clean up rubbish, perform vigorous exercises, or recite the national anthem. But on April the 1st, 2021, a 28-year-old Kavit resident named Darren lay in his home desperately thirsty. He tried his very best, but he was forced to leave the house at around 6 p.m. to buy some water from the nearby shop. He carefully left his house, he purchased his water, and after this, he made his way home. This is when Darren was apprehended by two police officers on patrol. He was in trouble for breaking curfew. Darren was arrested and taken along with the other rule breakers to the Plaza Malabon. Here, they were sentenced to vigorous exercise. They were told to do squatting and pumping exercises, repeated 100 times. The enforcers told them to repeat it if they were not in sync. Darren stumbled and flailed while he did these. He was in no physical shape to be doing this. He was dripping in sweat and could hardly breathe. He begged them to stop, but they forced him to continue. And in the end, Darren did 300 squats. Darren did not return that night. He was kept in the police station, and the next day, on April the 2nd, he was escorted home to his family. When he arrived home, he had to be carried in by the police officers. He was in such bad shape that his wife even asked if he'd been beaten up. He just looked at her and smiled, but it was clear that he was in immense pain. He could barely move and couldn't stand up. He spent the rest of the day laying in bed completely fatigued. When he needed the toilet, he was literally dragging himself across the house. Later in the day, Darren took a turn for the worse and began having seizures. He convulsed and his face turned purple. Suddenly, he went into cardiac arrest. Despite multiple attempts at CPR, he could not be revived. His official cause of death was stroke by hypertension. His death made many question the punishment for breaking the curfews. Many questioned why they would apply the same blanket rule to all, despite fitness or age. Many argued that a simple punishment would be fitting for an incident like this. And the worst part was that he wasn't out to bait the rules. He needed to get water and it cost him his life. His family were furious and demanded an investigation. But at the time of writing this, justice has yet to be brought for Darren's bizarre death. This story goes back to 1980, when a 21-year-old man from South Carolina named Michael Anderson was arrested and charged for the brutal murder of a 24-year-old woman named Mary Elizabeth Room. Michael went on trial for Mary's murder in 1981, where he was successfully convicted of murder and sexual assault. Due to these crimes, he was sentenced to death in South Carolina's electric chair. But Michael's attorney desperately appealed this sentence, and he was successful. The crime of sexual assault was revoked, so his sentence was lowered to life in prison. Eight years later, on March the 7th, 1989, Michael was sitting naked on his metal toilet in his cell. He was working on repairing some headphones that he'd had for his television set. He was toying with the device, trying to get it to work, when he bit into the cable to peel away the protective plastic. As soon as he did this, within an instant, it sent electricity flowing all around his body. Using the toilet as a conduit, he was being electrocuted 
by the electric toilet. Michael's entire face was severely burnt and his tongue was completely charred. Guards later found him dead on the toilet. Fate is not that easily deterred. While he managed to escape the electric chair, he failed to escape the electric toilet. In January of 2021, a father of two named Thomas Mansfield was working in the town of Colwyn Bay in North Wales. He was working as a self-employed personal trainer and worked weekends as a security guard. As his job as a personal trainer, he would often order protein supplements, shakes and bars, but he'd also read online that caffeine supplements are also very beneficial. So in early of 2021, Thomas ordered a 100 gram pouch of pure caffeine. He intended to mix this in with drinks to give him that kick that he needed to pump it at the gym. The caffeine arrived on January the 5th and Thomas was eager to make a drink. He quickly checked the label and the recommended serving of the powder was 60 to 300 milligrams twice a day. But when Thomas went to weigh it out, his scales only gave a minimum of two grams. As he was aiming for a mid-range dosing, Thomas poured what he thought was a small amount into some water and he took a sip. As it tasted good, he downed it in one. He had no idea that he'd put in at least five grams of caffeine in there. His wife watched as his smile turned to worry. Seconds after drinking this concoction, he began frothing at the mouth. His wife ran outside to call for help before an ambulance was called. They arrived within five minutes and began using a defibrillator on him. His heartbeat was described as grossly abnormal due to the tremendous amounts of caffeine. Despite their best efforts, he soon went into a full-blown cardiac arrest and was rushed to the nearby hospital, where sadly, he was pronounced dead at 4 p.m. on January the 5th. When they tested his blood, he had a whopping 392 milligrams of caffeine per litre of blood. For reference, the lethal limit is around 78 milligrams per litre of blood. So he had nearly five times the lethal dose. The coroner said his official cause of death was caffeine toxicity and his death was labeled as a misadventure. The company that sold him the caffeine supplement was investigated and they were found to not be at fault. They breached no guidelines with their labels and it all clearly stated the dosing limits and had very clear warnings. However, they did change their packaging to include a scoop to avoid this happening in future. On the 25th of March, 2017, two young women named Coral and Clarissa went out to see their local horse races in Chihuahua, Mexico. Coral had been hard at work studying law and Clarissa was in her last years of high school. They were both excited about seeing the horses as they'd not been before. Around noon, 18-year-old Coral and 17-year-old Clarissa arrived at the racetrack and the games began. They instantly loved it. Now the races were held on a track adjacent to an airfield runway. After the races were done, the girls wanted to take a selfie to remember the moment. They tried to take a few, but the angle wasn't quite right. They were struggling to get the racetrack in the background, so they figured they needed to gain altitude. This is when they got the idea to go into the neighboring airfield to snap a photo. They left the racetrack and easily got into the airport, but they found it still wasn't good enough so they climbed on top of a van to reach the highest point. It was perfect. They began getting the right angle and ended up snapping this photo, which actually doesn't even have the race in the background. But anyway, passerbys asked them to get off of the vehicle, telling them that it was dangerous, but they took no notice. Moments after this photo was taken, a plane came flying through the air, pulling into the runway. And sadly, the girls didn't hear or see it. Its wings clipped them both in the head throwing them off the van and into the ground. They had both been decapitated. Paramedics were called, but there was nothing that could be done. They were both pronounced dead at the scene. They had died just trying to get a selfie. Now this story makes me wonder how they could get onto the airstrip so easily, why the plane didn't see them both, how they didn't hear the plane, and why they even went that extra mile to get a silly photo. In 2019, a 51-year-old man named Darren Hickey 
was a manager at a wedding venue in Lancashire, UK. Darren was described as a positive and enormously caring man. On April the 4th, Darren was on shift and it came to the afternoon. They had just had a big wedding and it was time for lunch. This meant the end of Darren's shift. As Darren grabbed his bag and began leaving, he suddenly got stopped by the chef. He asked him to try a fish cake that they'd made for the guests that night. And without a moment's hesitation, Darren bit into the fish cake. While it was delicious, it was scalding hot. Despite this, he chewed and chewed and quickly swallowed. He told the chef that it was good and thought nothing of it and hopped into his car to head home. Now this is when his throat began to hurt. It was fine at first, but as he made the drive home, it got worse and worse. And by the time he got home, he was in utter agony. He was taken to hospital and he told them that he'd eaten a very hot fish cake and that now it was burning. He was seen by an ear, nose and throat specialist and the doctors looked in his throat and strangely, they could find no visible burns or damage to his tongue or mouth whatsoever. As they couldn't find an apparent reason as to why he was in this pain, the doctors provided him paracetamol and sent him home, telling him to return if the pain increased. While the painkillers did work for a bit, the pain soon got out of hand. Throughout the evening, he began struggling to breathe. Around 9.45 p.m., Darren's wife heard him making noises in the upstairs bathroom. He shouted for help, but when his wife got upstairs, he was just stood there choking and coughing. She banged on his back to try and help, but he then slid onto the ground and into unconsciousness. He was rushed back to the hospital where they tried desperately to save him. They now used specialist equipment to look into his throat. They looked deep down and they could now see that his voice box was terribly swollen. And deep down in his esophagus, they could see that it was severely burnt. They did all that they could, but he sadly died later that evening. A post-mortem was conducted and they found that his voice box had swollen to an extreme limit, so much in fact that it blocked his airway. The coroner likened this type of injury to that of a house fire victim. He said that a fish cake causing this type of injury is extremely, extremely rare. Now, we all had that awkward lesson in school that in hindsight, we definitely needed. But clearly in this story, this man got no sort of lesson. In August of 2021, a 25 year old man named Salman was spending some quality time with his partner at the Amber Hotel in Ahmedabad, a city in India's Western state. Now Salman and his partner were chronic drug users. They were addicted to sniffing epoxy glue. They would always keep this on their person and huff it for a quick kick. Now, as the two spent some alone time together, they began huffing the glue like no tomorrow. When they started getting jiggy, they realized that they didn't have any contraception. And this is when Salman had the epic idea to utilize their glue. He thought that if he was to glue his penis shut, his lady wouldn't get pregnant. What a no-brainer idea. So without much thought, he applied the epoxy glue to his member and went at it. The pair completed their mission leading to what I can assume was a very painful climax, and that was that. However, the next day, check-in staff arrived at work early in the morning and found Salman lying unconscious in the shrubbery outside the hotel. An ambulance was called and they got him to hospital, and here they discovered the makeshift contraception. It was terrible. They could not get it off. His body had bloated and his skin was yellow. Despite a Trojan effort by the doctors, he could not be saved. He died later that night from multiple organ failure. An investigation into his death is ongoing, but it's assumed that he couldn't urinate, which led to his bladder exploding, which then led to his death. Indian officials issued a warning to all to avoid using superglue as a johnny, but Salman's life ended in one hell of a sticky situation. But that is the end of the video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below but just before I go, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone that's liked, subscribed, and even commented. You are much appreciated. This is a dream come true for me, so I can't thank you enough. So here's to another 100k. But as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.